Hello, welcome back. In the last video, I used geometry nodes to create this sort of halftone effect in 3D. How awesome is that? But you might be thinking, what about colors? So in this video, we're gonna look at that. Um, it's not really going to be a halftone effect anymore, but we're still gonna have like spheres or cylinders or whatever you want. And we're gonna color those cylinders all using geometry nodes and here are some animations I already rendered using the result of today's tutorial. And if you like my tutorials, please don't forget to give the videos a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, activate notifications. That tells YouTube that those are good videos and more people should watch them. And I am back in Blender 3.1. This is what we ended up with in the last tutorial. So if you haven't seen that one yet, maybe you should watch it first to know what all this is about. So first of all, we said we wanted some color. So re let's replace this black and white image with a color image. Okay. It still looks black and white. Why is that? Because we don't have any color information on our geometry. We're just using a different image now, but basically we're just using the color information uh, brightness values now to scale our dots. So it's still black and white. It's not that easy, right? So I think we're not going to actually scale the dots anymore, but let's see, I'm just gonna unplug this for now. So we have this grid of uh, icospheres here and we're also not using the cylinder as you can see. We just want to get this information from the image that we already have UV mapped here and use that in the shader node. Okay, so how do we do this? So here we have the instances and we probably need to make real mesh out of those instances, first of all. Okay, so let's delete that. Go shift A, instances, realize instances. So now we have real geometry. This is all real now. And now on this geometry, we can assign an attribute. We can pipe that attribute to the outside world, outside of uh, geometry nodes, and use it in the shader. Well, sounds easy. Let's try it. So we are going to capture an attribute on this geometry. The attribute is a color value, and the color should be coming from our image. Okay, now, this attribute that we have on the points, we could set that to face maybe, capture the attribute on the faces. We pipe that out to the outside world. What does that mean? It means over here in the geometry nodes modifier, we now have this attribute and we can give it a name. We can call it color, a new attribute color. Okay, so now after the geometry nodes node tree does its thing, the geometry, the resulting geometry has an attribute on it, meaning each face of that attribute now has this attribute call and its value is the color information from our image texture. Well, that sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Let's see if it works. So we know we called it call. Over here we have our principled BSDF. Maybe I'm just gonna, for demonstration purposes, take an emission shader and use that instead. And for the color, we want shift a input attribute. We named it col in the modifier. Plug that in here. And what do we get if we switch to rendered view? Not much. Why? because we have to assign this material, right? Our instances don't have, let's do it in here maybe. So let's go back to material, set material onto our icospheres. Uh, which one is it? This one or that one? That one, cool. Is that already working? Are those icospheres? Oop. Why are they so big? Because we took away the scaling. So if I make them smaller, 0.5. 
0.5 is still big. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay, so now we have colored dots. What if I switch off my world? You can see we have three dimensional ecospheres while using an emission shader now and their individual dots. Okay, cool. So this already works. Uh, there's one thing though. And if we zoom right in, we can see that now over here we're using uh, the nearest interpolation of the face, uh, meaning that the resulting geometry, those icospheres, they have a lot of geometry. Each icosphere has a lot of vertices and a lot of faces. And we're assigning a different color to each face of each icosphere. <laughs> okay? And that is why we get like shading information on each dot. Now, if this is what you want, yeah, well, then you're done. Otherwise, if you want each dot to have a solid color, we have to think about this some more. Over here, we have the grid. This is the base grid that we started with just vertices, right? So what if we capture this attribute on the grid mesh like so? Using the color on the grid mesh, capture the color information. And then over here, we have different geometry. Our output geometry is different. So we need to transfer this uh, attribute from this geometry, which is just a grid of vertices, onto this geometry, which is the f uh, the actual um, like echospheres or cylinders or whatever. So to transfer attributes from one geometry to the other, you know, you use this node. It is a color. It's this color. We transfer it to this geometry. So that should do the trick. And then over here, we just set it to nearest. And then each dot has a solid color. Cool. Well, we're done. <laughs> Let's go back to shading instead of the emission. Use our color attribute on a real principled BSDF shader so that we can see that they're actual little spheres. If you want it, of course, you could still go back and use this for scaling the dots. But I think that looks a bit weird. Also, this is now backwards, right? Because we inverted this color here. Let's do, let's unmute this node. M is for muting and unmuting. Can we reset this? Reset curve. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have really big spheres where it's white and like tiny, tiny spheres, like zero size spheres. Let's do this like that. You can still do that if you want. Then you have smaller spheres where it's dark and bigger spheres where it's bright. But uh, I think for this effect, it looks better this way. Right, just uh, a whole bunch of uniformly scaled echospheres and you can play with the final size here, 0.5, or you can play with the echosphere size here. Or just like in the last video, we could use a cylinder instead of an echosphere. So let's plug that in here. What does that look like? Looks like this, also cool. Now with the cylinder, what about scaling it? So we get this interesting reset curve, flip that around Ugh, like that. Gives us this crazy thing. Now what about scaling the cylinders just on the C axis? Hmm. How about we remove that float curve node? Control X removes it and keeps the noodle. And we take a vector math node, plug that in here. 
that didn't plug in. Multiply that by one and uh, what did I want? I wanted to blah, blah, blah. no. You know what? I'm gonna create combine X Y Z scale one, but for the C I'm gonna use that. So it looks like this now. Also interesting. How do we invert this? Add negative one. And we get this. That's creepy looking. <laughs> okay. How about we switch this node out and do use a float curve in here? For the C, not for the color. Hello, this this way, and then bring down this. Uh, maybe like that to get some sort of cool looking effect. Nice. Point five. So from the top. We can still see the picture. Cool. Now, what if I take this lamp and make it orange and turn up the strength and take that lamp and make it teal, turn up its strength so we get something. Bup, bup, bup. What happened? Interesting looking through the camera looks like this and of course it's still animating and uh, now I only get 10 frames per second and it's still a still image by the way I have a, uh, a video a color video this one so how about that yep still animating let's look at it from this angle Here you can see still working and from the top we actually can't see the colors now anymore because of my lights let's go back to the shader and use a let's just do a viewer node uh, um, hey, uh, there a noodle is missing last one okay now we have this is creepy looking. Well, that's it. And we have a video. So this is actually animating. Pretty cool. That's it. I hope you enjoy these Geometry Notes tutorials. If you do, give them a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. It's free after all. Please let me know in the comments down below if you're at all interested in any more Animation Notes tutorials or if you just want Geometry Notes. As always, you can get the finished blend files of these tutorials from my Patreon page. And thank you to all the patrons already supporting my channel. That's it. Crispy out. Bounce with the rhythm, bounce, bounce with the rhythm.